I'm not gonna lie, I love this community. I, I pulled up hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram and like people like Never Abandoned Ship, Starboy Wonder, you know, Ruchka, yeah, like, like we have Spaz, people who consistently submit. This community is dope. This community is awesome. And I, I do appreciate you guys submitting. And mind you, that's just to name a few. Like, we have Slug Daddy. We have a bunch of people who submit pretty consistently. And I like seeing people come back. I like seeing people return. And just the evolution of your guys' artwork. And I said this over my Twitch recently. It's as if we're growing up together. And there's, there's something special about that. You know, with all of my stuff out the way, let's get into it, right? We have Rosk here with our first critique. He's got a nice straight letter. Look at how he lined up his R. This is perfect. You can see the sketch line right here from the leg of the R. And you can see how it meets up on the vertice of the bowl right there. This is the perfect way to line up an R. There are more than one way, which we're not going to get into right now, but this is some good stuff. I also like how you have 3D going straight to the right, and you manage to go ahead and tilt this box slightly so like that you don't have a tangent 3D. Smart move there. With that said, anyone who's doing pieces this size, take a look at your sketches. Are you doing pieces this size? If the answer is yes, make it smaller. You don't want your pieces to be this large in the beginning when you're learning. And the reason for that is so you give yourself room for things like 3D. As you can see, your key line on the R right over here rubs just against the edge of the page. So you don't have any room to go more to the left. And your K ended up running out of room because of the size of this. So your piece simply is just too big for the paper itself. And this does play a massive role because then we start to get into letter and name weight. This disrupts that. This disrupts you being able to actually experiment fully with letter and name weight, letter and name positioning, negative space management, and even sometimes letter structure. Not so much in this piece, but with other pieces we've reviewed in the past, you can see how the piece running off of the page ends up making letters squished, which disrupts letter structure. So you want the left side of your name to be about here, and you can keep it at the bottom and the right side to be about there, in the same height. Once you get better, and all that stuff, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. You can do pieces however the hell it is you want, but when you're learning, it's best to do it this way so that you can actually practice all of the fundamentals. Simple as that. Other than that, great stuff, great stuff, man. I like it a lot. Last note to hit on is the S. The S does not flow in the hand style, and it's mostly because of how small it is in comparison to everything else. Now, the size isn't like massively apparent, but once we take a look at the bowl of the R and how big that is, the O and how big that is, and even the K and how much room it encompasses, and then we take a look back at the S, you notice that the S is nowhere near as powerful as it could be. So think about these things next time. Once again, overall great work, man. I, I like this piece a lot. Next up, we have Ruchika. And honestly, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I don't have much of a critique for this. This is a 15-foot mural painted in their city. And, and this looks amazing. Like, this is dope. I really just wanted to share this. Like, look at this. This is this is some dope stuff. Next, we're going to see her doing, like, collaborations with Kipto and all that, right? Well, that'd be dope. She's got some really, really good work. I love this. Ruchika, I don't, I don't have a critique for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like it too much. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I really like this. I just wanted to share it with the community. Focus less on style. I, I know I say this in every single video, and some of you guys are getting tired of hearing me say it, but it's something that needs to be said. A lot of you guys are trying to add style when you guys don't understand basic straight letters. And that's something you desperately have to understand before you can go ahead and add crazy amounts of style. Now let's take a look at, at something we can all learn from here. There's a topic in graffiti where we start to look at how much of a percentage of a letter can we cover before the letter's structure ends up getting broken. Not only that, but what is the most efficient way to cover a letter or overlap a letter in order to maintain balance and in order to maintain letter structure. And the best way to do this is to alternate your, your overlapping areas, right? So we take a look here at the T for this. The top of the T overlaps the R and the bottom of the T overlaps the R. As a result, this weakens the R. Now the structure is still very much intact, but the R is still very dramatically weakened. They could have had the T go above at the top and the R go above at the bottom. You could have switched it however you wanted, but alternating your overlaps helps maintain balance, flow, as well as letter structure. Once again, in this specific instance, letter structure is not affected. But, in future instances, letter structure could be. I would say elongate the T a little bit more just to kind of give it more weight. It is a pretty weak T. Also, doing these lines going past and inwards is an indication of form which you don't have here. So I, I wouldn't really do those lines continuing forward unless you're gonna actually go in on forms. Because what's happening here is when you do this, you're saying that this part right here is above this part, but there's nothing else to indicate that. And the issue with this really becomes when you begin to use them a lot, which is what happens here in this piece. If you use them sparingly, it doesn't really do much to your piece at all. And you'll see this, I do this a lot on my R, where I'll go ahead and I'll hook in this part of my R, but you don't see me do this a ton 
everywhere, and if I do, I'm messing with forms in some other way. Star Boy Wonder, here's another image I just wanted to share with you guys. I gave him a critique in the messages over on Instagram on just overall his work in general. And I think this is an artist who, who you know, people should really pay attention to. This guy's gonna do big things. His work is phenomenal. Like if you go to, screw it, we're going to his Instagram. If we go to his Instagram, you, look at this, look at the Drake, look at this. This is some pretty good stuff. Taking advantage of those hashtags I see, look at this, some pretty good work here. This is one of my favorite images by him right here. Because like, like look at the little subtleties in the shadow areas right here, the, the the nice attention to detail for value. Notice how you can still see the eyeball, but at a first glance, all of this looks pitch black. That is compressed values 100%, and it looks amazing. That looks really, really good. Look at the beautiful cast shadow, too, for the butterfly. Th this is some good stuff. This is my favorite image by him. And I have a feeling this one's going to be another one of my favorites as well. Definitely should check out his work guys. Commissions are open too. There you go. Alright, so we got one here from Angst and this goes right back to what I said in the beginning of the video where you guys should be doing your pieces smaller because this is going to allow you to go ahead and practice on negative space management, letter and name weight, and letter structure. This is also an example of what I mentioned earlier when I said how sometimes your piece being too big can distort your letters because that's exactly what happens on the M. The G takes up two times the size of the M, pretty much. So had Angst done her piece about this size, she would have had room for everything. Give yourself about a nice inch off of every corner for your, your piece. With that said, some things to note, she is aligning her R properly in this area, which that's a, that's a big problem a lot of people have, is a lot of people have the issue of where to line up this, this piece of the R. Maybe I'll make a video for that, because that could actually help. You also want to keep in mind, though, the mean line of your letters. This is going to be where the center of your letters is, so that'll be about here, established on the G and the R. But your M has the mean line way up here. You could make the argument that the mean line is right here, but with how thick this box is, it you know I just want to place it in the middle because of once again of how thick this box is. So do keep that in mind. Try to keep everything proportioned. Keep the middle of the letters about the same for all the letters. Keep the top of the letters about the same for all the letters, and the bottoms about the same for all the letters. Once again, I want to stress: once you get it better, you can do whatever the hell it is you want. But when you're starting off, this is an efficient way to practice. Look at this, Naruto. I don't know anything about Naruto. I think this is Naruto, right? This is Naruto and he turns into a fox. And he's like, Rograr, I'm Molo angry. And this is uh, this is Sad Man, right? Or is this, is this, there's a lot of guys who do this, right? It doesn't, I've watched like fighting compilation videos. Don't a lot of people do this? You have, you have Sad Man who's like, oh, my brother. Oh, my, my vengeance for my brother. And then you have his brother who's like, ah, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused and I'm not sure if I'm bad or good. And then you have the guy with the one eye who's like, I'm, I'm borrowing somebody's eye? Is he borrowing somebody's eye? I don't really understand. And then you have somebody else. Isn't there somebody else with a, with, with, with an eye? And then they brag about it. They're like, oh, oh, fucking, fucking, uh, sawing gun. And then things happen. And they're like, I'm a ninja, but I use magic. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know who he's fighting, but he's fighting somebody. And now with all that said, I'd say practice anatomy. And the reason I say this is because if we take a look, we can tell just by looking at the image that hands more than likely give you a little bit of an issue, which I understand hands are a bit tough. I have a video actually explaining some really good tips for how to, who the, who the fuck? Oh, it's my mom. Hello, mother. So, uh, you know, I want you to check out, if any of you guys have issues with hands, check out this video I made. It gives some really good tips on how to draw hands pretty easily. Also, it looks like you use a lot of reference photos to do your work, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you also want to increase your mental library, your, your you know, your visual library for art. And this requires you to, every now and again, do work from your imagination. Now, I am a big, big, big advocate for using reference photos. Every professional artist does, but it is very important in order to kind of draw from your imagination just to see how much knowledge you're actually retaining from using the reference photo, because there's a difference between using a reference photo and studying from it versus just using a reference photo and copying it. There's a big difference there. And just for anybody who's interested, the difference is Professional artists, when they use reference photo, they study the subject matter. They're, they're analyzing and they're learning from it. When you're just copying it, you're simply just going, okay, this goes here, that goes there, that goes there. You become a human copy machine and you don't really retain any of that information. So I want you to start retaining the information. Look at your reference photos and analyze it. Why is this like that? How does that work? Why is it working in that way? 
and how can I use that in a different scenario? That's always important. Overall, great work though. I don't know much about Naruto, but I'm sure Naruto fans know about this fight and they, they absolutely love this image. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if you know, wh what did I get right with Naruto? Am I right? Is this sad man? Is this the guy who's like, my brother deserves my vengeance and I, the, the sad man, the guy with the blue hair, he was, uh, he was the one who was kidnapped by, by the snake furry. The guy who's like, oh, I love snakes and I want to be a snake. And he's like, sis, bitch, I'm a snake, ho. <laughs> Isn't that him? <laughs> you guys are gonna hate me. <laughs> Marker, thank you for, for submitting this. I actually love this cartoon right here because it's very much in the style that like I've tried to go in with my Skillshare, you know, studying things. I've, I've tried to kind of do something like this and you're doing it. And I think it's really, really dope. I actually want to take a look at your other work in a second. Look at Cat Anatomy a little more because the forms of this would tell me that the forearm would be visible in this area over here which we don't get to see that. So forms and anatomy for cats. Also work on hands, we can tell that's an issue for you, which I know is a, is a sketch, but with how refined everything else is and how matter of fact everything else is drawn with, hands could use some work. Look at this, you got some dope stuff. These hands are pretty good, I like that. Dude, I, I love, am I signed in? Can I follow you? Like right, I'm not signed in, damn it. I like your, oh, oh shit, look at this. Did you make this? Oh my God, that's dope. That's dope. Look, you have hands once again. Those are pretty good. Those are pretty good. Overall, I, I love your work. You're, you're better at cartoons than I am. And I love cartoons. Did I say cartoons? I love cartoons. Your work is amazing. I'm, I'm in love with it. Jasmine, let's take a look at this. You have yourself a little bit of a landscape here, right? I would say, real quick, some things you want to work on is depth of field. And you can achieve this not only by color, but by edges as well. As it stands, a lot of your edges are pretty blurry. Try to sharpen the edges of the things closer to you and, you know, blur the things further out. We can tell right here, my face is closer to you. It's nice and refined, it's nice and, and not blurry. This face, blurry as hell. There's my example. Try to pay attention to those things. Anyway guys, that brings us down to today's video. If you guys are having trouble with any topic in art or graffiti, ask me about it in the comments down below. Let's talk about it. Maybe in the next critique, we can check out some of those topics. After all, the series is 100% to help you guys. If any of you guys are new viewers here and you want to submit, use the hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram. Shit, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, cook some food and uh, have me a dinner because I am starving. Anyway, hopefully you guys are doing well. I'll catch you guys next time, but until then, peace.